Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's update. Um, it's the week of August 30th, our 29th, and we're looking back at what's transpired over the last week. Remember that there is a PDF PowerPoint that accompanies this YouTube presentation. Uh, it has more photos, always has more information. So you wanna grab that, that should just be uh, part of the YouTube link since you're on the channel right now. So with that, let's jump in. We always start with our news bites. And um, uh, let's start with um, what? Should we start with Senwar? Senwar is uh, uh, supposedly now in hiding, but in plain sight out of the tunnels. But here's the catch. Uh, reports say that he's now dressed as a woman. And so just think of Burka, think of all of that sort of thing and realize that he's out of the tunnels amongst the population now dressed as a woman. More on Senwar in a moment. Again, these are our news bites. So we just sort of hop around. Uh, Hamas wants to make it clear that really they're not interested in a ceasefire. They've said that, um, you know, Washington pushing for a ceasefire is simply due to the presidential elections that are coming up. And this terror group reiterates its unwillingness to compromise. Keep in mind, terrorism, the nature of terrorism is to dash hope. So, yeah, we're going to release this. We're going to release that. Negotiations back and forth lead you all the way up to that moment in time and then pull the rug out from under. No, 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 we're not. Uh, Israel's done this or that. It's the nature of terrorism. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to the nation. He's up on the uh, Golan, speaking with the uh, Golani Brigade up there, who we know well. And uh, he says that the restoring security to the north is the number one national goal of the highest order at this time. And so again, we have 80,000 refugees. That's really what they are, that are no longer able to live in their homes among the northern border. And needless to say, the time has come that Israel deals with Hezbollah once and for all. We'll see when, again, the nature of all of this is, um, you know, again, the psychological warfare of Iran and Hezbollah saying, we're going to attack, we're going to attack, we're going to attack. And then nothing happens. And, and yet everybody's waiting on edge for these things. That's the, again, part of terrorism. Um, Hamas is um, crippled. And bottom line, how do they fight when they're crippled and backed into a corner, when their arsenals depleted, when their brigades are destroyed? Suicide bombers. We saw this a couple weeks ago in Tel Aviv, and, um, and Israel realizes, and we'll talk about this again in a moment as far as uh, the West Bank, but uh, Hamas is aiming to revive suicide bombings um, again, 20 years ago, it was just horrific and a nightmare, but it seems as if that's the next plan of Hamas. And then, um, lastly, bottom line is the IDF is in firm control of Rafa. They're simultaneously penetrating deep into the tunnels, uh, the tunnel network of Cahun Yunus. Uh, believing that's essentially where the majority of the hostages are, as well as Senwar, that is, if he's underground. Um, so it's a matter of time. It's only a matter of time until most of the hostages are found, hopefully, but fearfully, hopefully alive, fearfully, not sure. And then the remaining military uh, leaders will be either captured or killed. And uh, again, with Gaza being 80% uh, subdued very soon, right on the horizon, this week, who knows when, but the totality of the power of the IDF will be unleashed on Hezbollah in the north very soon. 
So that's our news bites for this week. Our major articles, first of all, we're rejoicing over the rescue of Farhan al Qadi, um, an Israeli Arab, a Muslim. In a sense, he was found rescued in a terror tunnel in Gaza. Um, again, according to him, he spent most of his time pitch black in tunnels, moved various places, uh, had his Jewish friend killed right before his eyes. Um, so, I mean, the humanitarian aspect of the hostages is just nightmarish. But he, we're, we're rejoicing in the victory of his rescue. And I think there's a lot going on, and I think we're not getting all the information because I, I'm hoping and praying that where he was found will lead to um, others being released as well. This is a terror tunnel, and we're not exactly sure where, and I think that's inside information for the IDF. So, but we're rejoicing that he's been rescued. An article I'm going to read to you is called The New War. And part of the reason I'm reading that to you is that we're knee deep in our trip coming up to Israel. We're going November 7th through the 17th. I uh, hope you can join us. If so, get a hold of us right away because we're going to button up this trip in a couple of weeks. But when you're dealing with air, it's interesting that both Delta, American, and United have all canceled their trips into Israel. And this article was called The New War. I found it interesting. It says, it's clear that the latest war has begun a new trend. The decision by airlines to cancel flights is a new phenomenon. It didn't happen in previous wars for such a long time. And the logic behind the cancellations is really not clear. There are affordable alternatives, however, but Israel is becoming isolated through these decisions. And this is not a good message to send to countries that are facing terrorist threats or threats by authoritative regimes. Given the fact that Israel, it has the best air defenses in the world um, and it's supported by the United States in the West, the decision by Western commercial airlines to cancel flights for such a long period does not bode well. In the absence of any real solution, Israeli airlines uh, are, in a sense, we're flying and you're going to fly into one of the major cities in Europe. And then you're, to get into Israel, you'll be flying El Al, which is great. But... Uh, Better get your tickets now if you're going because there's a way that, in, in a sense, if LL is the only ones that are flying from major cities into Israel, um, there's a good chance that those prices will continue to skyrocket. Uh, Senwar, we talked about, I said, I alluded to the fact that we'll talk a little bit more about him. This is a report that was out that basically states that Senwar has surrounded himself with 22 handcuffed hostages. This is a report from intelligence given to the Jewish Chronicle. And that Israel's had uh, several opportunities to eliminate him. Um, they've located hiding places, but due to the fact that there are so many hostages, uh, the risk was not worth the reward. Uh, the Jewish Chronicle basically goes on to say, it's sober thought here, that of the 108 hostages that remain, uh, 20 are thought to be held alive by Hamas and a few others scattered through other uh, jihadist regimes, smaller than Hamas, whether it's uh, PIJ or whether it's the Alaska Brigades or whatever. But in a sense, uh, Senwar, as we know, whether he's hiding underground or above ground as a woman, his conditions of uh, peace or ceasefire is that um, 
again, he wants the Israelis out. He wants a guarantee that the from the U.S. that once the hostages are released, Israel doesn't go back into war. And then he wants a safe passage. He wants to be assured that once this is all over, he's not assassinated. Good luck. A new front opened up. We alluded to this in the beginning as well when I talked about suicide bombers. This is a new operation called Summer Camp. And uh, with, with the uh, Gaza being in the situation that it is, Israel is now focusing uh, its attention on the wild, wide-scale operations in the West Bank. They've called this the summer camp operation. It's focusing on targeting different refugee camps in Janine and uh, Nabulus and some of these areas that are just hornet's nests. And the bottom line is that the increase of terrorism in these areas is just, it's just multiplying or whatever. So... Time to take care of business. These are jihadists. These are Hamas-related entities. And Israel is now going to go into the West Bank. They have already and take out some of the leaders and some of their capacities for terror. And so not only do we have the North and Lebanon, not only do we have the South with the Houthis and Iran, no long, no, as well as Gaza with Hamas and, and Syria with Iran and all of that. This is a new front that uh, hopefully this will be short and concise, but lethal in dealing with terrorism. An article here called The Real War simply says that, and uh, whether you're a conspiracy theory person or not, we know that the U.S., is behind the scenes in a lot of this. Uh, the elections, uh, as Hamas is saying, uh, y y this whole talk of ceasefire and all that is simply because the Biden administration wants some sort of victory, look what we've done sort of thing. And so behind the scenes, the, the reality is World War III is on the horizon. I don't know if it's a month, a year, 10 years away, but it's on the horizon. And so this is the long game. The, the fact is, is that the Bible talks about a major escalation in war that will take place with Turkey, Russia, and Iran as a coalition together. That's Ezekiel 38 and 39. I don't see that uh, on the near horizon, I can be wrong, but I do think that the turmoil is going to continue and it's going to bring, uh, I, I don't see any lasting peace. And so I think the United States is trying to hold off all this as long as they can. They realize they can't, they can't keep uh, Israel in Bay for much longer, especially when we hear about the rockets that are launched and the threats of rockets or whatever, it will break out. In fact, Trump is warning uh, that this issue with Israel and Hezbollah could lead to the beginning of World War III. That's where we're at. A couple things before we end. Uh, Jews are coming home. Over 29,000 new immigrants have arrived in Israel since the beginning of this war on October, 20, October 7, 2023. So it's, re, it's mindful. Again, back to the Bible. Jeremiah 30, verses 2, 3. What does it say? Write in a book all the words I've spoken to you. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people, Israel and Judah, back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave to their forefathers to possess. 29,000 new immigrants going home since October 7, less than a year. Um, might as well, I hate to, I won't end with this, but the squad's back in the news speaking out. Uh, U.S. Representatives Ilan Omar and AOC, Alexandria 
uh, a Costco, Cortez, or AOC. They continue to criticize. Um, they continue to call for the Biden administration to change its approach to what they describe as the so-called genocide in Gaza. And while speaking to the progressive journalist Madi Hassan at the DNC last week, Omar, one of the most vocal anti-Israel lawmakers in Congress, suggested that the White House should force, force a ceasefire between the Jewish state and Hamas by blocking further arms shipment to Israel. Time to end the war, time to step back from our support in our ally, our chief ally in the Middle East, Israel. That's AOC and that's Ilan Omar's suggestion. Okay, as I mentioned, we're going uh, November 7th through the 17th. Our website is holygroundexplorations.com. Check it out. Uh, pray about joining us. So with all that, everything that's going on, wish you the best. Shalom, shalom, and God bless you.